Hey, what's up guys? I made this video because there's some stuff about public EV charging I think you should know. Uh, the biggest takeaway if you decide to stop watching this video is that public EV charging is not normally free. It just isn't. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was mainly free. Anyway, let's do this. Yeah, I'll give you a hand. I'm gonna go over types of charging and plugs, costs, ways to pay, problems with public EV charging, and give some tips on how to do it best from what I've learned so far. Here are the basic types of charging. Level one, level two, and level three. Level one is your slow, like regular outlet charge. It takes forever. It's about three miles of charge per hour. Level two has some different speeds. Uh, it's faster. It charges between 10 and 25 miles per hour of charge. Level three is DC quick charging and can charge up to 90 miles per hour of charge. Plugs. You have your standard J1772, Chatamo, uh, and Combo, or Combined Charging System, CCS for short, and then there's Tesla. Those are the ones I'm aware of. I think there's at least one more kind in Europe, and I'll put that on the screen, but yeah. This gets confusing, so just bear with me. Of those, my car uses the first two, J1772 and Chatamo. The Chatamo plug is for DC quick charging. It can handle a crap ton of watts and is high voltage. It can often bring you from 0 to 80% charge in around 30 minutes, depending on your battery size, age, and then temperature at the time of charging. Chatamo is found on many Asian EVs, and as for charging stations, it's plentiful in Asian countries, and vastly found across the US uh, DC quick charging networks. The J1772 is what I have at home and mainly use. Uh, it can handle 110 or 220 volts, uh, and the wattage it handles is low to medium low compared to DC quick charging. It is what you find with the house plug adapters that come with most EVs and is at the vast majority of public charging stations. The CCS plug is a combination of the J1772 and another portion uh, on the bottom here to establish a uh, DC connection. CCS is a crap ton of watts and high voltage, like Chatamo, uh, and it does uh, the 0 to 80% charge quickly. It is European, and you'll find this on European cars and GM uh, electric vehicles. Uh, unlike Chatamo, it is less plentiful in the U.S. currently. Uh, the new Chevy Bolt has this plug if you uh, get the DC quick charge option, and the Chevy Spark before it had it as well. I apologize to my European viewers for not knowing much about what is this called? IEC Type 2 connector that you guys have because I don't know much about it. And finally, there's the Tesla plug. Tesla has adapters that work with nearly everything from your standard house outlet to your standard dryer outlet to your standard uh, 220 volt campsite plug, the NEMA 1450. And finally, the Chatamo plug as well. There's an adapter for that. Tesla is especially unique due to its supercharge capability. Superchargers can charge at a higher wattage than any other DC quick charge at this time, or at least in the US. I think it's like up to 130,000 watts. That's a lot. Finally, for types of public charging, regular outlet plugs is a way to do it as well. Sometimes companies provide like a wall outlet and a sign that says EV charging. ChargePoint made these stations where like you pay and it unlocks a flap and then there's a plug behind the flap and you could charge that way. That was interesting to see. Okay, that covers types. Let's talk about costs and ways to pay. First, some companies like Nissan have deals like this one uh, called No Charge to Charge, where if you buy or lease a new Leaf, you get two years of complimentary unlimited charging at certain brand uh, charging stations to include DC quick charging. It's pretty cool. Uh, Tesla has some similar unlimited charging included as well for when you take a road trip uh, on some of the older models. Also, Tesla's charging speed, uh, as I mentioned, and also though their location uh, of chargers is unmatched currently. They've got a lot. I want to say globally, like they've got the, the widest and best network. Yeah. Aside from programs like those, costs are various uh, and sometimes free. Okay, I'm going to go over costs. It's going to be a little overwhelming, but just bear with me. Bears. There's no bear. Don't get the bear. <laughs> Sometimes there's a minimum fee, uh, like ChargePoint, for instance, has a minimum fee of $3.50 to start a quick charge session, uh, and it also covers the first roughly 12 kilowatts, and then it's uh, about $0.29 cents after that per kilowatt hour with no time limit. 
However, signs posted at all of the charges that I've been to say a 30 minute limit. So, you know, that's a, it's on the sides. Uh, EVgo has higher costs and a time limit, and I'll talk about that soon. Uh, sometimes the cost is per kilowatt hour, uh, similar to how you're charged for electricity at home for charging stations. Uh, sometimes it's free with paid parking. This garage in Baltimore gives you the first five hours of charge free, and then after that it's like two bucks an hour. Cheapest paid charging I have seen uh, when you have to pay is a dollar an hour. Uh, for level two and the most expensive i paid so far is about eleven dollars for 30 minutes uh, on dc quick charging that was for about 45 ish miles of charge stupid expensive uh, and that was evgo in maryland Ugh, i do not like evgo some places though do have free charging as i mentioned uh, once again baltimore is an example there are some chatamo and ccs like combination stations i don't know if they're called that uh, they're free uh they cut you off at 30 minutes but you can just restart it's nice and there's a conservatory as well that offers free level two charging around back so it does happen but it it seems to be rare uh, there are various ways to pay no chargers so far in my area let me simply just swipe my credit card and that is annoying uh, different companies offer chargers online with the like mechanism where you can swipe but i've never seen them so far so you win vending machine you win <laughs> the main way i have found that you can pay is through a card with an enabled radio frequency identification chip or rfid did you ever have a credit card with this symbol banks have greatly phased out this feature with credit cards at least in the u.s uh, and maybe it's due to lack of use by customers i don't know security i don't know Anyway, you may not be able to use that card at EV charging stations. Instead, subscription services or memberships that issue you a card are needed. Sometimes the membership is free, sometimes it's a monthly charge, uh, and then they uh, will mail you their card. Uh, it's inconvenient because there are so many brands out there. Uh, and some examples are Blink, EVgo, and ChargePoint, etc. Right? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot. Uh, this is the back of the Easy Charge card that you get when you get a new Nissan Leaf from a dealer that participates with that no charge to charge program uh, this one does not work for me because i bought a used leaf and simply requested a card to find out that it was not able to be activated uh if you want to see a review of my leaf blip i have it i don't know if you can click on that or if you're just gonna like smudge my face i don't know anyway uh evigo i'll show you their website on the screen uh, they offer membership packages that can cost up to like 14 bucks a month uh, which can in turn reduce your usage costs. Uh, for example, eliminating the $4.95 minimum DC quick charge like initiation fee and only charge 10 cents a minute uh, for it instead. Yeah. Another way to pay through some memberships is to utilize their smartphone app uh, like ChargePoint here. And you can start a charging session and then you, you pay that way, sort of. Uh, they pull like money out once you fall below $10 and they like put $20 back in or something like that. It's weird to start the charge. Uh, finally, if you don't have an account or membership like with anybody, uh, there's usually a way to deal with that. You can oftentimes find a phone number on any public charging station with an ID number for the device. And then you can call. There's a person there. You let them know your station ID and then you also can give your credit card information over the phone to pay. That's usually like one or two dollars an hour. And then you start to charge that way. It's really weird. I had this not work so well the first couple times I attempted a new brand of charging station and they just ended up giving me a free charge instead because they asked me to use like my touch tone thing and put in your credit card and then it went back and forth. It's like, please enter in. It didn't work. So good direct marketing though for giving me the free charges and uh yeah i appreciated them because i needed them okay this is taking too long let's do some pros and cons of public ev charging pro ev charging is growing in my area even with the worn out leaf that gets 40 to 60 miles per charge it's 2012 uh there's still plenty of dc chargers around and they get me where i need to go they're not cheap but if i need them they're there con the cost is not usually cheap in the long run when you use public charging. Please keep in mind that charging at home is much cheaper overall, and you, you just got to remember that. It's way cheaper than any public charging almost all the time, unless it's free. Gas 
is a little over $2 a gallon right now. And if you compare my Volvo S80, it gets about 18 miles to the gallon. For five bucks, you can go about 36 miles. Uh, EVgo, the EVgo station I mentioned earlier where I paid $11, I, uh, equivalent $5 there got me less than 22 miles. So that was expensive. A uh, pro. <laughs> The cost can be cheaper than gas. Uh, talk about fighting pros and cons. I pretty much just said the opposite, but hear me out. So the charge point station I mentioned, uh, where $3.50 was the minimum fee, it can get me about 45 miles of charge. And for my Volvo to go 45 miles at $2.25 a gallon, it's a little over $5.60. So the cost can be cheaper. And especially if fuel prices go up, uh, maybe they're going to keep going down because so many electric cars. I don't know. Con, availability. This is the biggest con of public EV charging. You should keep in mind this every time you even think about public charging. It's just, is it gonna be available? Uh, there's a term for one of these availability issues. It's called icing, uh, ice, internal combustion engine. So, EV charging stations are not disabled person parking. Currently, to my knowledge, there's no enforceable laws that keep people f with regular internal combustion engines or any other non-EV from parking in the EV spots. So you'll find people with their gas cars in the EV only spots uh, being what many EV drivers call gas holes. Also be aware that people who drive EVs are in no way entirely considerate of others. They can be gas holes too. Perfect example from my experience so far is when I went to a location that had free DC quick charging. A one DC charger and one level two J1772 plug. The store owner is proud of his charger. Uh, it's powered by the wind. Mom's Organic Supermarket in Frederick, Maryland. Thanks, Moms, for having the charge. The, yeah, well, there was this dude there with his leaf plugged into the DC quick charger. We'll call him the first guy. Uh, DC quick charger stopped and the second guy came along and unplugged him and, and plugged in his own leaf. And then for the first guy, he, he plugged him in the level two to top him off. I waited for like 45 minutes uh, for the second guy to finish. Then I used it for about 50 minutes and I went out regularly to check on it and like to make sure no one was waiting. I shopped at mom's too and I bought food. When me and my family started leaving, the first guy got there with what looked to be his wife and daughter, no groceries and they were there for over two hours at least, at least. My detective instincts lead me to believe they were watching a movie because there was a movie theater in the same mall. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any groceries, yeah. Mind you, his car was fully charged for quite some time already. Of course, I said hi, you know, because he, he came back to his car in a different state of plug, at least. And uh, I let him know what happened. And his response was, I should have locked it. So what he meant was on the newer Nissan Leafs, you have like a lock button where you can lock the plug in place so no one unplugs you. I, that's all I can figure is what he meant so that he would have the plug locked for his duration of time being there. So no one else could use it. Like, wow. Uh, even though he drove a Leaf, you know, doesn't mean anything because he was a gas hole too. Be ready for that. Be ready for huh, availability. Blah. Finally, tips. There's a app called PlugShare and there's probably other ones as well. I strongly suggest you Google charging station apps. Uh, PlugShare, I'll show you. Um, you just see the map, you can see where stations are. Sometimes if people are active on their app as well on their phone, they'll say, hey, I'm charging. Be done in like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Others will update like the status of the charger, like, hey, it's broke, or like a car ran into it. It's a pile of rubble on the rubbish, rubble on the road. <laughs> rubble on the road! Uh, another tip is to not worry about DC quick charging so much. If you have like a 2013 and newer Leaf, or just any of the newer, like the Bolt, uh, or even a Tesla, you can usually charge at that 25 mile an hour rate with the uh, level two charger. I don't have that. I wish I did. That would, like a 50 mile trip in two hours you can recharge. That would be awesome. I have to wait uh, four hours for that. Uh, but even then, like I can go shopping for four hours and pay four to eight dollars and, and be okay with that if it's like once every so often. 
you're mainly going to be charging at home. That's all there is to it. If you get a Tesla or a Bolt, you're doing way better because you're very unlikely to have to need public charging. But it is a learning curve when you get started. Oh man. I don't think people like go to a gas station and then they'll pump their gas and then just let it sit there for an hour with the, the pump in it, with it not pumping. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's interesting phenomenon. Recently, Tesla implemented an idle fee where when your car is done charging, they'll start charging you 40 cents a minute thereafter uh, if you go over five minutes. So if you wait 30 minutes after your car's done charging, you're gonna spend nine bucks. Hours is like $18, right? Am I doing my math right? I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Biggest pro of public EV charging is also its biggest curse. You often can park closer uh, when you go to public places like malls and things like that that have EV charging. But like I said, people with gas cars frequently don't care, so they'll just park there anyway. Uh, a quick note to companies that will probably not even see this, but hopefully do. Uh, put your EV chargers farther away and in more abundance, please. Do not do just one like dual station. Please do like ten and put them far away. I don't mind the walk. I would greatly appreciate the charge. Uh, call ChargePoint. They'll work with you. Best network, I'd say. If you want to know more about this, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, I can do a video on home charging as well. Just start shouting out. And of course, if you like this video, there's a button for that. If you want to see more videos like it, there's a button for that. And if you're just bored, go ahead and cruise my channel. Maybe there's something there to leave you less bored. Well, I hope that helped. See you later, Internet. Okay. Oh. Doo -doo. It's about as good as it gets.